Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about low pass filters and high pass filters. And this ends up being really, really important in the field of signal processing, but also more in general when we're talking about time series or when we're talking about image processing. People tend to throw around these terms high pass filter or low pass filter so much. And personally, it's not something I even learned until I got to graduate school. So I want to go ahead and break this topic down for you guys so you understand it. So first things first, let's understand what a signal is. So we're gonna start with this signal which basically just is some kind of measure, some kind of metric that's varying in time. So our x-axis here is time, and our y-axis could be really any measure you could think of. So this you can think of as just some kind of time series. Now if we stare at this time series for a second, we can see that there's generally two broad areas in this time series. There's places where the time series isn't changing much, it's more or less flat, or it's not changing that much over time. And we call these areas of low frequency. And this kind of makes sense because the frequency of the signal is not that jumpy over time. It's relatively smooth in this area and this area over here. Now contrast that with the middle of the time series, which I've labeled high frequency. And you can see that that makes sense because this is literally an area where the frequency of the signal is high. But in more layman's terms, it's an area of the signal where there's a lot going on, where there's a lot changing in a relatively small amount of time. Now, it's important to make this distinction between low frequency and high frequency areas of our signal, because based on our application, we typically want to do one of two things. We either want to keep the low frequency areas and delete the high frequency areas, or we want to do it the other way around. And I'll explain what are the applications, what are the reasons we might want to do each one. But first, let's learn one definition. This is a math channel, but today we're going to have to be introduced to one new word, which is called attenuate. Now, this is a word that gets thrown around so much if you read about this online or if you take a university course that I couldn't just skip it. Attenuate means to reduce the intensity of a signal, okay? So I'll be using that word today. So first, let's look at the first class of transformations that you might usually consider doing on your signal. And this is the low-pass filter. Now let's go down to the goal. The goal of a low pass filter is to smooth or denoise. And what that means in terms of our low frequency and high frequency is that we want to take areas of high frequency and smooth them out. Because when you're using a low pass filter on a signal, you typically think of areas of high frequency as noise. And you want to reduce the noise in your signal. And therefore you want to smooth or denoise it using a low pass filter. So more officially, what a low pass filter does is it passes the low frequencies. And what I mean by that is if there's areas of low frequency in your signal, it's not going to do much to them. It's just going to allow them to pass right through the transformation. But if there are areas of high frequency in your signal, it's going to attenuate them, which means make them less intense, make them less extreme. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the simplest low pass filter we can think of, and I'll show you a generalization. So here's the simplest low pass filter. It's just one half and one half. And what do we do with that? Well, mathematically, we convolve that with our signal, but that's a little bit of a scary word. I might have a separate video on convolution but what it means in very basic terms is that for every pair of points in your signal, so let's say your signal is measured every hour or every minute, whatever it happens to be, for every pair of measurements that are right next to each other, we're going to take one half of the left measurement plus one half of the right measurement. So you can think of it as a equal weighted linear combination of side-by-side -side points in your signal. And even more easy way to think about that is really just taking the mean of side-by-side -side pairs in your signal. So you're basically going to take this little kernel, as it's called. So in the signal processing community, they call this a kernel, typically. You're going to take this little two-element kernel and kind of sweep it along your signal. And each time, you're going to take the average of neighboring elements. What does that do in more general terms? It smooths your signal out. And we can make it even smoother by generalizing this idea. Instead of doing one-half, one-half, and just taking the average of two neighboring elements, we can do 1 over n, 1 over n, 1 over n, and of course there are n elements in this array or in this kernel more officially. And if we apply this with a big enough n, then we're going to take this original signal and the transform signal is going to look like this. So you can see that we did exactly what we wanted. We kept the areas of low frequency and the areas of high frequency have been attenuated, which means that they have been made much less intense in magnitude. And again, probably the most popular application of a low pass filter is to get rid of noise. Noise tends to have a very high frequency because it's random and there's not a lot of correlation between noise at neighboring time intervals. So we want to get rid of that and therefore we apply a low pass filter in order to smooth our signal out. Now let's go to the other end of the story. There is a different set of transformations transformations that we might want to do where we do the exact opposite thing, where we actually keep the high frequencies and we take the areas that are low frequency 
and we attenuate those, which means we make these much less intense in magnitude. Now, why would we want to do that? The main application of a high pass filter, which is exactly the transformation that I just described, is to do edge detection or sharpening. And what that means is that we might actually care about where is my signal changing the most? Where is it the most dynamic? Where is the most exciting stuff happening in the signal? And if I asked you any of those questions, you would probably point to this area of high frequency over here. So a lot of times when you're looking at a time series or a signal you care about, where is it changing the most? That might be an area of concern or area of interest that I want to look at. And in order to best identify those, we actually need to do the opposite of a low pass filter, which is a high pass filter. So a high pass filter again is for edge detection or sharpening in the context of images, which we'll look at in just one moment. But it does the exact opposite, which is that it passes high frequencies through. What that means is that if something was high frequency in your signal, after you apply your high pass filter, that's still going to be relatively high frequency afterward. And it attenuates low frequencies, which means that if something was low frequency in your original signal, those areas are going to be made less extreme. And it's easiest just to take a look at a quick example. So the easiest high pass filter is negative one and one. Now I actually want to think about the interpretation of this for a second. We do the exact same thing with it, right? So we're going to take this negative one, one, just like we took this one half, one half. We're going to sweep it across your signal or across your time series. And we're going to multiply the negative one by the left element and multiply the one with the right element for each pair of neighboring elements. We're going to sum those up and that's going to be the value in the transform signal. Now, why is this a good idea? Think about what you're really doing. You're literally just taking the difference between the next data point and the data point before it, right? Because you'd be taking the next data point minus the data point that comes just before it. So what you're doing is basically taking pretty much a derivative, right? You're basically saying, what is the change between one point and the point that comes right after? And let's think about what that change is going to be for the low frequency areas. For the low frequency areas, by definition, there's not much going on. So the value of the signal at one timestamp is going to be pretty much the same as the value of the signal at the timestamp before it. So that means that when we apply this kernel, we are going to get zero because we'll be taking one value and subtracting pretty much the same value. So these low frequency areas will go to zero and that's how we achieve this attenuation of low frequency content in our signal. Now what happens to the high frequency content? The high frequency content by definition is changing a lot so it's not going to necessarily go to zero and that's how we achieve the passing of the high frequencies. So this very little simple kernel actually achieves a very awesome goal of taking our low frequency content to zero and that lets us know that there's not a lot going on there and it takes our high frequency content and retains it. It does not send it to zero. So that's how we know that in our transformed series, so after we apply this small high pass filter, we can look to the areas that are not zero and that's going to be a good indication for where we have the most change. And here's me actually applying. So we see that the areas which are not zero are the areas of the highest frequency in the original signal and that's where the change is happening the most. Okay. And of course there are variations just like we had variants on the low pass filter. We can also think of variants on the high pass filter. So while I won't explain the theory behind this one, this is taking a first difference. If we were to take a second difference, so a second derivative, we would get this kind of kernel here. And this is often called the Laplacian, but I won't dive too much into that. Just know that there are different variations on high pass filters and low pass filters. So the last thing we'll look at is extending this to images, because a lot of times you care about not applying this to a time series. So a time series is a signal that's varying in time. An image you can think of as a signal that's varying in space. And that's kind of a crazy concept if you don't think about images like that. But think about what an image is. It's some kind of square where we assign a value to each pixel. And as we move around space, so as we move around the different space in this image, we're going to have different values. So this too is a type of signal. But it's not a time dependent signal, it's a space dependent signal. So we can apply the exact same ideas. We can take low pass filters on images in order to make them less noisy or blur them. And we can apply high pass filters to images to find the edges of the image, the areas of the image where things are changing a lot. And let me actually just show you this on a test image. So here's a picture of some nice scenery. And let's say that first we want to apply a low pass filter. So we want to blur this or we want to denoise it. So we're going to go ahead and apply this type of low pass filter. So since this is a two dimensional signal, we need a two dimensional kernel. But you can see the very basic extension that this is from our 
case here. It's basically just taking this and extending it to two dimensions. So when we apply this type of kernel to our scenery image, this is what we get. So you can exactly see we did what we wanted to do. We blurred it or we denoised it. And based on the exact size of this kernel, the amount of blurring is going to go up or down. Now let's say that we want to find all of the edges in this image. We want to know where things are changing the most. So before even doing it, I would expect that the edges would be strongest not in the sky or in the water where it's relatively smooth, there's not a lot going on, which means that the value at one pixel is probably the same as the pixel next to it. The edges would be where trees meet the air or where the water meets something else. So if I apply this filter or this filter, and by the way, these are called Sobel filters. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below, but they're very widely used to do horizontal and vertical edge detection. So if I apply these filters and then do kind of a combination, then I would get this image. So you can see that I exactly got the areas that are lighting up where the image is changing the most, where they're the edges. So that's it guys, that's all I wanted to say about low pass filters and high pass filters. I mostly wanted to make this video because it ends up being something that I see so much when I'm doing my research or I'm looking up a new topic. But again, it's not something I even learned until I got to grad school. And I think if you're not specifically studying engineering or signal processing, it's not something you would naturally come across, but it is so important and people talk about it so much. So hopefully you understood the importance of low pass filters, high pass filters, why we would need either one and applying it to either a time dependent application or a space dependent application. All right, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you next time.